And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Roberto Hernandez Stadium here in Aiken, South Carolina. And it is good to be back if you are this USC Aiken Pacers squad. Very tough weekend on them, not only having a tough series against North Georgia, but the unfortunate accident that occurred late that Sunday night after their final game against North Georgia. I'm sure most, if not all of you, are aware of the fire that happened on the bus. Fortunately, the only casualties were some equipment as every single member of the baseball team and the coaching staff got out safe and sound and unharmed. And with that, we'd like to say our thanks. Before the game today, and a little emotional moment as both the Erskine Flying Fleet, the visiting team today, and the Pacers gathered around the mound took off their hats, bowed their heads, and wrapped their arms around each other's shoulders and said a prayer of thanks that they're all safe and healthy today. But enough about that. It is baseball time. I am Marcus Johnson thanking you for joining us on this Wednesday evening as the Erskine Flying Fleet come in to play the USC Aiken Pacers in a single-game matchup. Pacers coming in today into to today's game. With a 14 and 7 overall record, 8 and 2 at home, 6 and 5 on the road, and a respectable 6 and 3 conference record. Erskine, non-conference opponent, 12 and 10 overall, 6 and 2 at home, 8 6 and 8 on the road, and in even 500 in their conference at 4 and 4. The starting pitcher for today's game for USC Aiken is Daniel Wiggins. Wiggins is slotted to go about 3 innings today as I heard overheard before the game began with a 6.94 ERA, a 1-0 record in his eight appearances. This is his first start of the season. He also has one save on the year. 11 and two-thirds innings pitched. Opponents batting 313 on him, so we'll look to get those numbers down just a little bit. Corey Everett will be the leadoff man for Erskine. Everett, the right fielder for today's game. Go ahead and give you the rest of the Pacer defense before we get to the first pitch. First baseman today is Alex Mills. Catching is Luke Leisenring. Second baseman for today's game, Philip Watcher. And a little shift around here. Trey Paluski takes over at shortstop and Chandler Rogers at third base. Your outfield, Jackson Hannon in right field. Your center fielder, Sean McQuillan. And left fielder is Blake Jenkins. Well, Wiggins is ready to go as the first pitch comes in. Swing and a foul tip for strike one. We are underway. And once again, Corey Everett, the first batter. Everett, the top hitter for this Erskine squad. Batting 392 on the year, six home runs, 15 RBIs. And the 0-1 misses inside, 1-1. One one. On deck for Erskine, Cole Warkin, the first baseman. And the 1-1 pitch misses high for a ball. 2-1. and one. It has been a busy week, a couple of weeks for the Pacers, and it will be another busy weekend coming up as the NCAA tournament gets started. USC Aiken Pacers ranked third in the region will take on Lenore Ryan in the men's basketball tournament. That one is chopped foul for a strike to even the count of 2-2. Two two. Pacers looking for a little playoff redemption after finishing second in both the regular season for the Peach Belt Conference and in the Peach Belt Tournament, falling to Augusta in both cases. Two two on its way. Curve ball is popped up shallow. Left center field. That's gonna drop in for a base hit. Not hard hit, but hit well enough. Well placed, and the leadoff man Everett aboard for Erskine. So Cole Warkin up to bat. Warkin batting 345 on the year. A pair of home runs, 14 RBIs. Wiggins' first pitch gets the outside corner for a call strike. Everett, the man on first, has three stolen bases on the year. Has yet to be caught. So he's three for three. Slow chopper to second. 
The throw to first is going to be wide, and it's going to end up in the dugout. That will be scored a base hit, as that would have been a tough play. But an E4 drives everybody up an extra bag. So runners on second and third. Still nobody out. The third baseman, number 23, Drew Yanesta. Drew Yanesta up to bat, the third baseman for the Flying Fleet. Yanesta batting 388, seven home runs, leads the team in that category, and 24 RBIs also leading the team. Two on and nobody out. Both runners in scoring position as the first pitch slider misses, ball one. Fouls it off, one and one. And the 1-1 one -one from Wiggins misses high and away. Two balls and one strike. Wiggins in a very early jam right now. Erskine's a pretty good hitting team overall, batting 299 as a squad. As that one misses, three balls and one strike. When you have a t and your entire team almost hitting 300, in fact, that's probably gone up after the pair of base hits, so they're, for all intents and purposes, they're batting 300 on the year as a team. You have to be very careful with your pitching. The 3-1. Just brushes the outside corner. Ball gets away. Runner coming home. The throw to the plate is not in time as it goes all the way out to second base, backed up by Trey Paluski. I think that was a pass ball. So the count is full at 3-2. and two. A runner comes home to score, and that runner, Cole Everett. And the Flying Fleet lead at one nothing here in the first. Warkin is at third now after the pass ball. And the 3-2 pitch, grounded up the middle, grabbed by Paluski. He fires to first and gets it there in time. Scoring is Warkin. And the score now 2 to nothing, Erskine, as there is now the first, as the Pacers finally have the first out of the inning. So Nick Vela up to bat, the left fielder Vela, batting 346. Two home runs, 16 RBIs on the season. First pitch falls into the strike zone, or should I say slides into the strike zone, 0-1. The 0-1 fouled off, 0-2. Off the framing of the stadium again. Almost bouncing back into the field of play. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Vela goes down on strikes for the second out. The shortstop number 10, Kyle Heiss. Kyle Heiss up to bat now. Heiss the shortstop batting 342 on the year. Five homers, 15 RBIs. Nobody on and two outs here in the top of the first. Erskine already leading USC Aiken two to nothing.
First pitch is nicked. 0-1. Oh Ground ball to short. Paluski has it. Throws to first and gets it there for the third and final out. That will do it. Top of the first inning comes to a close. We're moving on to the bottom of the first. Erskine up two to nothing. And welcome back. Bottom of the first inning set to get underway. Sean McQuillan will lead it off for USC Aiken. McQuillan batting 302 on the season. No homers, but 11 RBIs to his name. And he will face off against Josh Talton, the starting pitcher for Erskine. Talton with a 2.40 ERA, a 1-2 record in three starts, four appearances. 15 innings pitched. Has 15 strikeouts on the year, and opponents batting 254 on him. First pitch finds the strike zone for strike one. Second pitch also strike, 0-2. Misses outside, trying to get him to chase. One ball and two strikes. Count evens up at two and two now for the Pacer center fielder. Well, and just catches a piece of that one to freeze the count at two balls and two strikes. In there for strike three, McQuillan down on strikes for the first out. That'll bring up the shortstop, Trey Paluski. Paluski batting 349 on the season. Two home runs, 12 RBIs, and slugging 508 on the year. Paluski really blossoming into a solid player on the season, both offensively and defensively. 
First pitch, curveball just brushes the inside corner for strike one. Grounder up the middle, grab that second. The throw to first is in time, and Paluski down for the second out. That'll bring up the DH, Connor Durden. Durding, 282 average, five home runs, 21 RBIs, and he leads the Pacers in both of those categories. Grounder to third, and that's going to end up foul for strike one. The 0 1. Good pitch right there for strike 0 2. The 0 2. Low and away. One ball, two strikes to Paluski. And the 1-2 pitch. Misses inside. Durden thought about going for it. Held back. Counts even, count evens up at 2-2. Two and two. Just catches a piece of that one. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Well hit to second, grabbed by Vizcarando, and he gets it over to first in time for the third and final out. Pacers go down in order, and we're moving on to the top of the second inning. Erskine still up 2-0. And we move on to the top of the second inning. Lucas Cars will lead it off, the designated hitter for Erskine. Cars batting 267 on the air, three homers, nine RBIs. He 
Goes after the first pitch and hits it high into the air. Shallow center field, McQuillan comes in and makes the catch for the first out. The second baseman, number 12, Xander Viscarando. That'll bring up Xander Viscarando, the second baseman. Viscarando batting 298. Eight RBIs on the season as well. One out and nobody on here in the second. First pitch misses high for ball one. <coughs> The one up. Laced out into left field. Coming in and making the catch is Jenkins for the second out. Well, two quick outs, and that brings up the catcher, Asher Smith. Smith batting 176 on the season. Has one RBI as well. First pitch, fastball right on the outside corner for strike one. The 0-1. This is low. 1-1. One one. Foul tip. Count moves to one ball, two strikes to Smith. And the one two from Wiggins, fly ball, right field. Hannon is there and makes the catch for the third and final out. A one, two, three inning. We're moving on to the bottom of the second. Erskine still up two to nothing. And welcome to the bottom of the second inning. Pacers coming to bat now with Alex Mills leading it off. Mills batting 253 on the season. Four home runs, 14 RBIs. And the first pitch to Mills is in there for a strike.
Outside, one and one. Sent on out into left field. Pretty deep, still going back. That one's going to be off the scoreboard and gone. A solo home run for Alex Mills. Puts the Pacers on the board. A trail two to one. Well, it didn't look like it was hit too hard, but it ended up off the scoreboard and out of the park. The Pacers have their first hit and first run of the game as Luke Leisenring, the catcher, comes to bat. Trying to follow that one up. Leisenring batting 339 on the season. There's a pair of home runs and eight RBIs. First pitch. Misses outside for a ball, 1-0. Again, missing outside, two balls and no strikes. The 2-0 misses high and away, 3-0. and Low and inside, ball four. Leisering walks on four straight to give the Pacers a runner on first and still nobody out. The left fielder, number 42, Blake Jenkins. Though Blake Jenkins to the plate. Jenkins, 304 batting average on the season, three home runs, 16 RBIs. First pitch to Jenkins, misses outside, goes all the way to the backstop, and that's a free base for Leisenring as he shuffles on over to second. Show bunt and bunted foul for a strike, one and one. Here's the 1-1 to Jenkins, and we're going to wait on the 1-1 as Dalton steps off the mound to check Leisenring. Now the 1-1, ball in the dirt, 2-1. We'll delay here as we await the 2-1. Now Talton is ready. Goes an off-speed pitch, finds the strike zone to even the count of 2-2. Two two. Swing. 
Swing and a miss. Jenkins down on strikes for the first out. That'll bring the second baseman, Phil Watcher, to the plate. Watcher batting 302 on the year. No homers, seven RBIs. Goes after the first pitch and grounds it foul for strike one. And the 0 1. Ball misses low. Although Smith able to keep it in front of him. Count evens up at 1 and 1. One ball, one strike, one out, one on for number one at the plate in a one run ball game. So Watcher awaits the pitch. And we'll have a call of time here from Watcher. Now the 1-1. One, one. Misses outside, 2-1. Here's the 2-1. Grounder to second. Go to first in time for the second out. Runner advances on the play. So the Bison ring at third with two outs for Chandler Rogers, the third baseman. Rogers batting 308 on the season, no home runs as well, 15 RBIs. First pitch high and inside to Rogers, ball one. Slow ground ball to short. Picked up by Heiss. He throws it over to first in time to get the third and final out. But the Pacers get one as Alex Mills led off the inning with a solo home run. They trail Erskine two to one, moving on to the top of the third.
I get them every time. And welcome back to USC Aiken Baseball, presented by Aiken Flooring. Aiken Flooring, you can stand on us. We are in the top of the third inning. Erskine leading USC Aiken 2-1. to one. Daniel Wiggins' first pitch is a swing and a miss for strike one to Trevor Lassane, the center fielder, a number nine hitter in this Erskine lineup. Lassane batting 189 on the year, no home runs, six RBIs. And that one misses low for a ball, one and one. Shows Bunt, bunts it down the first base side. This is going to be tough as nobody's covering the bag, and the flip to Wiggins will not be in time as he was nowhere near the base. An infield single for Trevor Lassane to start things off here in the third inning. The right fielder, Corey Everett. That will bring us to the top of the order, and Corey Everett, who singled and came around to score his first time up. Goes after the first pitch, pops it straight back and out of play for strike one. Wiggins taking his time, now deals the 0-1. Another pop-up, this one in the field of play, in the infield first base side. Mills gets over and makes the catch for the first out. I'll bring up Cole Warkin, also singled and scored to run his first at-bat. Runner on first base with one out here in the top of the third. Check throw to first base, not in time. Lassane gets back safely. High and inside for a ball. 1-0. Much to the displeasure of the Pacer crowd here. Another check throw to first, not in time. Well, say not a huge threat to steal on the season. 0 for 1 in stolen base attempts, and he's a little uh, shaken up. They're going out, and they're going to go check on him. We're going to take a short break while they make sure Lassane is okay.
Well, everything seems to be A-OK, -okay, so we'll get right back to baseball. A 1-0 count to Cole Warkin. Runner still on first base with one out here in the top of the third inning. Fastball upper part of the strike zone, one and one. Runner takes off, and the pitch is fouled off, one and two. One, two, up the middle, and that's going to get through for a base hit. The runners on first and second now for the Flying Fleet. Drew Yanesta up to bat, grounded out his first time up, but he drove in a run on that ground out. Runners on first and second now with one out for Yanesta. Pitch from Wiggins. Curveball fouled off. Strike one. Sent on out into right field. Hannon is there, and he makes the catch. Runner tags from second, and the throw will be cut off. They'll fly out for Yanesta as Lesane makes his way to third to put runners on the corners with two outs. The left fielder, number 21, Nick Vela. I'll bring him Nick Vela, the left fielder. Vela 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up. Runners on first and third. Two outs here in the top of the third inning. First pitch from Wiggins, brushes the outside corner for a strike, 0-1. The 0-1 fouled off, 0-2. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. Got him with a slider. Vela down on strikes for the third and final out to leave two men stranded. Bottom of the third coming up. Pacers still trailing 2-1.
And we're back with the bottom of the third inning of USC Aiken Baseball, presented by the South Carolina Education Lottery. Remember, when you play the South Carolina Education Lottery, you're not only taking a chance, but giving a chance. Jackson Hannon will lead it off for USC Aiken. And the first pitch to Hannon is in the upper inside corner for a strike. Hannon batting 233 on the year, one home run, nine RBIs. A little chopper to third, the long throw in time for the first out. The center fielder number eight, Sean McQuillan. That'll bring up Sean McQuillan, struck out looking his first time up to start the game off for the Pacers. First pitch to McQuillan, and he lays down a bunt. It's right back to the mound, the throw to first in time for the second out. Number four, Trey Paluski. So Trey Paluski to bat now. Grounded to second his first time up, so he's 0 for 1 today. And the first pitch to Paluski is a curveball, which misses low for, strike, for ball one. A shot up the middle, and that's going to get by a diving heist for a base hit. Paluski thinking about second, and he will make a hard stop and head back to the bag at first with a two-out single. That'll bring up Connor Dirt, and he also grounded to second his first time up, 0 for 1. Runner at first base with two outs. First pitch low and inside, ball gets away. Paluski hustling to second, and he will make it in there with no contest. Paluski now in scoring position on the wild pitch. The one up, swing and a miss, one and one. The one one from Talton, misses inside, two and one. Outside corner for a call strike, even to the count up at two balls and two strikes. The 2-2. Two -two. A ground ball, that's going to get through for a base hit. Paluski rounding third, he's coming home. And he will score. It's an RBI single from Connor Dern to tie this ball game up at two. Yeah, baby. Yeah. The first baseman, number 32, Alex Bills. 
Brings Alex Mills to the plate. Homered his first time up. One for one today. Runner on first base. Two outs here in the top of, or sorry, the bottom of the third inning. First pitch, upper part of the zone for a strike, 0 and 1. Swing and a miss on a good cut, 0 and 2. The 0-2 pitch, fly ball, foul territory. Yep, foul territory is where it will be caught by the second baseman, Viz Corando, and that will do it. But the Pacers tie it up on the RBI single from Connor Durden, which scored Paluski. It's 2-2, two to two, moving on to the fourth. And we enter the top of the fourth inning. Daniel Wiggins' night is over, and William Ard comes out of the bullpen to take over. Ard, seven appearances on the year, no starts, a 5.25 ERA, 12 innings pitched, nine strikeouts on the season, and opponents batting 233 on him. Kyle Heiss will be the first man that Ard faces. And that one fouled off inside part of the bat on a check swing, 0-1-1.
rocketed foul and out of play. The 0-2. A chopper to the first base side. Mills gets it. Covering the bag is Ard for the first out. The designated hitter number 30, Lucas Cars. That'll bring up Lucas Cars. The DH popped out his first time up. 0 for 1 today. First pitch missing low and away for Mard. Ball one. The one out. Fouled off. One and one. the 1-1 one, one pitch and that one is sent on out into deep right field going back hand and still back that one is gone a solo home run for Lucas Cars and Erskine is back on top 3-2 to two. Xander Viscarando comes up to follow up after the solo shot from Cars. 0 for 1 with a fly out his first time up. First pitch is in there for a call strike, 0 and 1. The 0 1, high and outside for a ball, 1 and 1. <laughs> Fouled off, one ball, two strikes to Viz Corando. Curveball just misses the strike zone. Count evens at two and two. Laces that one out into shallow left field. Jenkins coming in, slides, unable to come up with it as the ball gets past him. Heading for second is Viscarando, and he will make it in there with a stand-up double. And that will bring up the catcher, Asher Smith. The catcher, number 24, Asher Smith. That's going to draw a visit from the Pacer dugout. And while we have this moment, we would like to remind anybody 
that if you wish to donate to the USC Aiken baseball team to help them restock on their supplies after the fire on Sunday, you should call this number, area code 803-641-3518. That's 803-641-3518. And that is the only way you can donate to the baseball team. There is no official GoFundMe patron for the USC Aiken baseball team. So Asher Smith digs in after the meeting. Runner on second with one out here in the top of the fourth inning. First pitch, upper inside corner for a call strike, 0-1-1. Here's the 0-1. Fly ball. Very shallow right field. Watcher goes out and makes the catch for the second out. The center fielder number six, Trevor Lassane. That'll bring up Trevor Lassane. Singled his first time up, one for one today. Runner still on second base with two outs here in the fourth. There's a ground ball to third. Rogers has it. Gets it over to first in time for the third and final out. Erskine leaves one stranded, but a home run from Lucas Cars gives them back the lead. It's 3-2, to two, moving on to the bottom of the fourth. And the bottom of the fourth inning about to get underway here at Roberto Hernandez Stadium. Marcus Johnson here thanking you for joining us on your Wednesday evening. Luke Leisenring will lead it off. He walked his first time up. The Flying Fleet leading the Pacers 3-2. to two. As the first pitch comes in for strike one. That one is lined and caught by Vizcarando, who steals away a base hit from Luke Lysadring for the first out. Only good defensive play later brings us up to Blake Jenkins, who struck out his first time up 0 for 1 today. First pitch. 
Finds the strike zone. 0 and 1. Right back to the mound, a little toss to the bag, and that will do it for Jenkins as he goes down for the second out. The second baseman, Phil Watcher. That'll bring up, up to Phil Watcher, the second baseman, 0 for 1. He grounded out to second his first time up. First pitch to watch her misses outside for ball one. Fouled off, one and one. The one one pitch. Misses high, two and one. Swing and a miss. Pulled the trigger a little too early, and the count evens up at two and two. Inside corner for a call strike three. Watcher down looking for the third and final out. A one, two, three inning moves us on to the top of the fifth. We'll be back in just a bit. And we move into the top of the fifth inning. Corey Everett, the leadoff man, will lead it off for Erskine. One for two on the day with a single and a run scored. Popped out his last time up. Erskine leading USC Aiken three to two as we move past the halfway mark of the game. First pitch from Wiggins is in there for a call strike, 0 one Just misses outside, one and one. Right, 
Sent on out into center field. McQuillan having to go back for it. It goes over his head and to the wall. Heading for second is Everett, and he will make it in there, standing up for a leadoff double here in the fifth. The first baseman, number four, Cole Warkin. Cole Warkin up to bat now. Runner on second and nobody out. He is two for two with a pair of singles and a run scored. First pitch to Warkin is low. Under Leisenring, he's going to fire it down to third. That's going to be off the mark. Everett's safe and sound at third base on the wild pitch. So now a runner on third with nobody out for Warkin. The 1 0. Fouled off the other way and out of play, 1 and 1. Swing and a miss. Tied him up with a high inside fastball, 1 and 2. One, two from Ard. In there for a call strike three. Warkin down looking for the first out. The third baseman, number 23, Drew Yanesta. That'll bring up Drew Yanesta. Runner still on third now with one out. He's 0 for 2 with an RBI on the day. First pitch to Yanesta misses low for ball one. Ground ball, that's going to get through the left side for a base hit. Everett scores. It's an RBI single for Yanestra and... Erskine now leads the Pacers 4 to 2. The left fielder number 21, Nick Vella. Brings up Nick Vella who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Runner on first still one out here in the 5th. First pitch misses outside as Vela lays off of it, 1-0. Check throw to first, not in time. Close play, though. The 1 0 on its way. And misses outside. Two seamer missing, 2 0. Oh. 
Another check throw to first base. Lard firing it over to the bag with some real heat behind it. Here's the 2-0. That finds the strike zone, 2-1. Swing and a miss. Count evens up at two and two. And the 2-2 pitch. Runner goes, and it's fouled off. Spoiling the hit and run or stolen base attempt. Well, it probably would have been a stolen base. It was a slow curveball from Ard. Here's the 2 2 again. That one has popped up foul territory, third base side. And that one will find the seats. But we'll see one more pitch at least. Check throw to first base. Again, not in time. And again, the 2-2. A ground ball. That's going to get through the first base side for a base hit. Heading for third is Yanestra. He will make it in there as the throw is cut off by Paluski to hold the runner at first. A single for Vela puts runners on the corners with one out. The shortstop number 10, Kyle Heiss. I'll bring up Kyle Heiss. Heiss 0 for 2, and Kenny Thomas coming out of the dugout. It looks like that is the end of the night for William Art as the Pacers will go to the bullpen. We will be right back in just a short bit.
Bases go to the bullpen and bring out Austin Sandifer. Sandifer, a 0 ERA with a 2-0 record in his eight appearances, nine innings pitched. Four strikeouts on the season and opponents batting 0-91 against him. Comes in with a little bit of trouble brewing here with runners on the corners and one out. And the first man he will face is Kyle Heiss, who's 0 for 2 today. And that one is going to be laced into right field for a base hit. Heading for third is Vela. And scoring on the play is Yanestra. It's an RBI single for Heiss. And Erskine now leads it 5-2. to two. The designated hitter, number 30, Lucas Cars. So I'll bring up Lucas Cars. He's one for two with a solo home run his last time up. Runners on first and third still with one out here in the fifth. Pitch on the outside corner for a strike, 0-1. The 0 1. Slow ground ball to third. Charging is Rodgers. He throws it to first, and the stretch from Mills gets it there in time for the second out. A run scores on the play, however. It is now 6 to 2 Erskine as Vela came home. The second baseman, number 12, Xander Viscarando. So, runner on second now with two outs for Viscarando. Rondo doubled his last time up, one for two today. First pitch finds the strike zone, a 1-1. One, one. The 0 1. Fly ball the other way. Foul territory. No fair territory in left field. And that's where it will be caught by Jenkins right along the foul line for the third and final out. Two more runs score in the relief effort from Sandifer. And three in total in the inning as Erskine leads it 6 to 2, moving on to the bottom of the fifth. And we're back with the bottom of the fifth inning getting underway. Leading it off for the Pacers is Chandler Rogers. First pitch missing for ball one. Rogers 0 for 1. He grounded out his first time up. Pacers trailing Erskine by a score of 6 to 2. Pitch miss, uh, hits the upper part of the strike zone there. 1 and 1. And 
And Rogers fouls that one off of his foot. One ball, two strikes. The one-two pitch. Ooh, that one goes off of the shoulder. And Rogers will take first base to start things off. The right fielder number 10, Jackson Hannon. Brings up Jackson Hannon, 0 for 1. Grounded to third his first time up. Runner on first with nobody out for the Pacers here in the fifth. They trail by four. First pitch to Hannon, falls into the strike zone, open one. And a check throw over to first. Nothing really to it, though, as that one was just kind of tossed over there. The 0 1. Ground ball to second. Flip to short for one. He said he just caught it on the bag. The throw to first, not in time. Very close over there as Heiss had to jump up to get that. And he just managed to get his toe to brush the bag to get the force out at second on the fielder's choice. Center fielder, John McQuillan. The 4 6 fielder's choice as Hannon reaches safely to beat out the double play. Brings up the leadoff man, Sean McQuillan, for the Pacers. One out and one on here in the fifth. McQuillan 0 for 2 on the day, and just before the pitch comes in, a call of time. Talton basically in the windup when that call came. Check throw to first, not in time. Hannon safely back at the bag. Good lead for Hannon over there at first. No wonder they were checking on him. Curve ball misses, ball gets away. Hannon f going over for second. The throw is not in time. As it goes off the glove of Heiss, luckily this Carando right there to grab the loose ball. So Hannon safe at second base, runner in scoring position now for McQuillan. Pitch low and inside for a ball. Now Talton deals. And that one fouled off the other way for a strike. Two balls and one strike. The count to Sean McQuillan. Okay. 
Inside corner for a call strike. Count evens up at 2-2 two and two to the Pacers center fielder. Tried to check his swing. Ball got away. They're going to have an appeal down to third and say he did not go. So the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. Runner on second with one out here in the fifth. For a brief moment, I thought that might have hit him off the foot. And the 3-2 pitch misses for ball four. McQuillan with the walk to win the battle and put runners on first and second with one out. That's going to draw a visit to the mound from the Erskine dugout and a pitching change for the Flying Fleet. We will be right back in just a short bit with a brand new pitcher on the mound. And welcome back, folks. Zach Farmer coming out of the bullpen in relief of Josh Talton. What a very impressive start. However, the runners on first and second are his responsibility. Farmer faces off against Trey Paluski for his first man. Paluski is one for two with a single and a run scored. And the first pitch in there for strike one to the base of shortstop. Farmer with a 4.38 ERA and a 2-0 record in his eight appearances. 12 and a third innings pitched. 15 strikeouts on the season and opponents batting 239 on him. The 0-1 swing and a miss. Off speed pitch. Got him to chase 0-2. The 0-2, -oh 
Right down the middle, Paluski down looking on three pitches. Connor Durden to the plate now, one for two with an RBI single his last time up. Two outs and two on here in the bottom of the fifth inning for the Pacers as they trail the Flying Fleet by four. First pitch in there for a call strike, 0 and 1. Right down the middle with a fastball, 0 and 2 to the Pacer DH. The 0-2, grounded slowly to the left side, backhanded at short by Heiss, and he's going to have no play. An infield single for Connor Durden, loads up the bases with two outs for the first baseman, Alex Mills. Mills with one homer on the day. Let's see if he can get another one. He's one for two on the day overall. Con so, not Connor Durden. Connor Durden singles to load the bases. Alex Mills coming up to bat, and Luke Leisenring awaits on deck. Big, big opportunity here for the Pacers, though there are two outs here in the fifth. First pitch to Mills, goes to the backstop. However, all the runners will stay put. And he's able to hustle back and get there in time with Smith. I think the runner, I think the runner at third, Hannon, thought the ball was going to bounce back a little bit more than it did, which is why he stayed put at third base. Now some people say take risks, others will say better safe than sorry. And right now, I'll say I'll, I'll go with the uh, the second group on that one. The one up. Low and away, and again, Smith keeping it in front of him, 2-0. Oh. The 2-0, a swing and a miss on a curveball. Two balls and one strike. The 2-1, line deep, but hooking foul. Count evens up at 2-2 two and two to Alex Mills. Bases are loaded. Two outs. Bottom of the fifth inning. Pacers trailing by four. It's 6-2 to two Erskine. stepping out of the box as he waits for his 2-2.
Pitch on its way. Outside corner for a call strike three. Mills down looking for the third and final out. Pacers leave the bases loaded. We're moving on to the top of the six. Erskine still leading six to two. Top of the sixth inning about to get underway of USC Aiken Baseball presented by Hudson Etheridge Companies and Auto Owners Insurance. For all of your life, home, car, and business insurance needs, count on Hudson Etheridge Companies and Auto Owners Insurance. Leading things off here in the top of the sixth inning is Asher Smith, and he pops that one up diving and... I think that went off of his head was Chandler Rogers unable to come up with the play. It'll be an exciting strike one. Asher Smith 0 for 2 today. As he gets a hold of that one, sends it out into the gap in a right center field. That'll split the outfielders and go to the wall. Smith heading for second, and he will make it in there with a leadoff double here in the sixth inning. Center fielder number six, Trevor Lesane. Trevor Lesane up to bat now, run around second, and nobody out here in the top of the sixth inning. Lesane is one for two today with a single. Grounded out his last time up. Pitch low and away for ball one. Shows bunt, bunts it straight back foul for a strike, one and one. Again, Lesane showing bunt. Pulls it back and sends a chopper to third. Rogers checks the runner at second, fires to first, and gets it there for the first out. All 
That will bring us back to the top of the order with Corey Everett. Everett, two for three today with a single, a double, and two runs scored. Arner still on second base now with one out here in the sixth. First pitch fouled off. Strike one. The 0 1. Misses outside and goes all the way to the backstop, and that will allow Asher Smith to reach third. Credit that one as a wild pitch to Sandifer. So a 1-1 one, one count with one out runner on third base now for Everett. Sanford deals, lined up the middle and threw for a base hit. That will score Smith. An RBI single for Everett, and Erskine now leads it 7-2. Brings up Cole Warkin, and we're going to have another pitching change as Kenny Thomas comes out of the dugout. We'll be right back in just a little bit with a brand new pitcher. And we are back. John Yarborough coming out of the Pacer bullpen to relieve Austin Sandifer. I'll give you the stats on Yarborough in just a second. 169 ERA, 1.69 ERA, 1-0 1 record in nine appearances, one save on the year. Ten and two-thirds innings pitch, 16 strikeouts, and opponents batting 179 against him. Runner on first with one out here in the top of the sixth inning. Pacers trailing 7-2. 
First pitch from Yarbrough is in for a strike to Cole Warkin. Warkin two for three today with a pair of singles and a run scored. Struck out looking his last time up. Check throw to first base, not in time. Everett makes it back safely. The 0 1 as the runner takes off. That one is going to be grounded through the right side for a base hit. The hit and run pays off. Everett will stop at third. It's a single for Warkin, his third of the day. The third baseman, number 23, Drew Yanesta. Oh, Drew Yanesta up to bat now. One for three with a single, a run scored, and two RBIs on the evening. Runners on the corners, one out for the Flying Fleet. First pitch on the outside corner for a call strike, going one. -1. The 0 1 popped up. Shallow center field. Catch is made. Runners thinking about tagging as the throw comes in from Watcher to hold everybody. It's a pop out for Yanesta. Runners remain at the corners with two outs now. Left fielder number 21, Nick Vella. I'll bring Nick Vella up. One for three with a single and a run scored on the night. And the first pitch from Vela. Runner takes off for second. And Warkin will take the will take second base with no throw. Taking advantage of that slow windup from Yarborough. The one up. Chopper to third. Diving stop by Rogers, but he's going to have to eat it as there's nobody to throw to. A run scores. And Nick Vela has an RBI single to keep the inning going. It's 8 to 2, Erskine. The third stop, Kyle Heiss. So Kyle Heiss up to bat. One for three as well with an RBI single his last time up. Runners still on the corners with two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. First pitch low and away for ball one. Runner takes off from first, swing and a miss on the pitch. And again, no throw down to second. Heiss with a stolen, not Heiss, Vela with a stolen base now. Count even at one on one to Kyle Heiss.
Pitch down the middle for a strike one and two. The one two. Curveball. Back to the mound. Yarborough has it and tosses it over to Mills at first for the third and final out. Two more runs score, though, and the Flying Fleet lead the Pacers 8-2, to two, moving on to the bottom of the sixth inning. And welcome to the bottom of the sixth inning of USC Aiken Baseball, presented by Tyler's Tire and Auto Center. Pacers down by a score of 8-2 to two to the Erskine Flying Fleet as Luke Leisenring leads it off for the Pacers. And the first pitch he sees is in there for strike one. That one fouled off for a strike, 0 and 2. Leisenring is 0 for 1 today with a walk, and he lined out to second. That basically had a base hit stolen from him in his last at bat. The 0 2, curveball misses outside, 1 and 2. One, two, another curveball misses high and outside, two and two. Swing and a miss. Lizen ring down on strikes for the first out. That'll bring Blake Jenkins to the plate, 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. And Jenkins fouls off the first pitch for strike one. Tried to hold back on the swing, but he couldn't. 0-2 to Jenkins. And a swing and a miss from Jenkins. Back-to-back -back strikeouts result in the first two outs of the sixth inning. The top 
second baseman, Bill Watcher. So Phil Watcher to the plate now. Watcher 0 for 2 with a strikeout of his own in his last at-bat. High and outside for the first pitch. Ball one. Fly ball. Right field. Everett is there and makes the catch for the third and final out. A 1-2-3 inning sits the Pacers down in order. We're moving on to the top of the seventh inning. Pacers trailing 8-2. And we're back with the top of the seventh inning about to get underway. Marcus Johnson here once again thanking you for joining us on your Wednesday evening. Pacers trailing by six. It's eight to two Erskine over USC Aiken as Lucas Carr's the DH will lead it off for the Flying Fleet. He swings and misses at the first pitch for strike one. Cars is one for three today with a home run, a solo shot, and two RBIs on the day. New pitcher for the Pacers. Lindsey Robinson Jr. takes over pitching duties as that one is in there for a strike. Count 0-2. Robinson with a 9.53 ERA in six appearances, an 0-1 record. Five and two-thirds innings pitched, and opponents batting 348 on him. 
And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes on three straight pitches goes Cars for the first out. Viscorando comes up to bat. He's one for three with a double. First pitch misses high for a ball, one and Outside for a ball, two and a. The 2-0 is high and outside with a fastball, 3-0 and o to Vizcarando. The 3-0 from Robinson, high and outside, ball four. Now the first batter, he threw three straight strikes. The next one, he throws four straight balls. For a one-out walk to the Erskine second baseman. Asher Smith up to bat now. One for three with a double and a run scored. Check throw to first base. Almost draws Mills off the bag, but he... Makes a short hop to grab it. Soft fly ball right to first. Mills makes the catch for the second out. Staying put at first base is Viscarando, and that'll bring up Trevor Lesane. Lesane one for three with a single. He's grounded out to third in his last two at-bats, however. Runner still on first base with two outs here in the top of the seventh. Check throw to first. Again, not in time. Pitch goes all the way to the backstop, all over, over Leisenring's glove. Vizcarando gets over to second on the wild pitch. And a call of time here from Lesane as he awaits his 1-0. That went down the middle for a strike, 1-1. One one. The 1-1. One, one. Ground ball to short. Paluski charges. Fires it to first. Good stretch from Mills. Gets it there for the third and final out. We're moving on to the seventh inning stretch. Pacers still down 8-2. to two.
And I hope you all enjoyed your seventh inning stretch because we're going on to the bottom of the seventh inning. Pacers down by six to the flying fleet of Erskine. Chandler Rogers will lead off the bottom half of this inning. Rogers 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in his last plate appearance, and he grounds the first one foul for strike one. The 0 1 is right down the middle for a strike, 0 and 2. Chopper to third, charging is Yunesta. He fires to first, and he'll get it there for the first out. Brings Jackson Hannon to the plate. He reached on a fielder's choice in his last at-bat, but he's 0 for 2 on the evening. First pitch to Hannon is a curveball that finds the outside edge for a strike. 0 and 1. This drops out of the strike zone at the last second. Hannon lays off. 1 and 1. Swing and a miss. Good fastball there. Hannon down 1 and 2. Outside for a ball. Count evens up at two and two. Another pitch misses low, and the count is full to the pacer right fielder. Chopper slowly to second. Vizcarando has it, gets it to first, and that will do it for Hannon as he sits down as a second out. The center fielder, Sean McQuillan. Sean McQuillan up to bat now, 0 for 2 with a walk. First pitch fouled off out of play for strike one. The 0 1. Low and inside, 1 and 1. The 1-1 one, one pitch misses low, two balls and one strike. Low and away again, three balls and one strike to Sean McQuillan. Popped up behind the plate. Smith chases back for it, and he will make the catch right along the netting for the third and final out. Pacers go down in order again, and we are going to move on to the top of the eighth. Pacers down 8-2 to two to Erskine.
And we are back with the top of the eighth inning getting underway. Corey Everett will lead it off for Erskine. He is three for four today with two singles, a double, three runs scored, and an RBI. First pitch misses for ball one, one and oh. Lindsey Robinson still out there for the Pacers on the mound. So that pitch misses high for a ball, 2-0. The 2-0, swing and a miss, high fastball, got him to chase, 2-1. High and inside, nearly catching a piece of his face there, three and one. The three one pitch, fly ball out into left center field and deep. At the wall, and that's where the catch will be made by McQuillan for the first out. And they gave it a ride, but not enough. Everett down for the first out, and that brings up Cole Warkin. Cole Warkin. First pitch in there for a call strike, 0-1. The 0-1, high and inside fastball misses, 1-1. One one. The 1-1 one, one pitch, sent up the middle, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. Went out single for Warkin. That's his fourth single of the day, bringing his total up to four for five. So Drew Yanesta up to bat, runner on first with one out. Yanesta one for four today with a single, a run scored, and two RBIs. That pitch missing outside for ball one. Here's the 1-0. That misses high, 2-0. The 2-0 pitch from Robinson is a curveball that misses high and inside. Three balls and no strikes to Drew Yanesta. The 3-0 is a fastball missing high. Yanesta walks on four straight, runners on first and second, and that's going to do it for Lindsey Robinson. Pacers are going to go to the bullpen. We're going to go to the break and be right back in just a minute.
we're back. Hunter Schuff, the new pitcher for the Pacers. He comes into the game with a 3.12 ERA, no record in eight appearances, one save, eight and two-thirds innings pitched, ten strikeouts on the year, and opponents batting 143. Runners on first and second are Robinson's responsibility. First pitch high and outside for ball one to Nick Vela. Nick Vela, two for four, a pair of strikeouts, a pair of singles, an RBI, and a run scored. The one out, swing and a miss, one and one. The 1-1 one, one misses low and inside. Two balls, one strike. The 2-1, high and outside, 3-1. Fouls it off, full count. And the 3-2 pitch popped up. Left center field. McQuillan is there, and he'll make the catch. And he'll fire it in quickly to keep the runners from tagging and advancing. The Vela pops out to center for the second out. Brings up Kyle Heiss. Kyle Heiss. Ice one for four with an RBI single on the night. Runner still on first and second with two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. Swing and a miss on a pitch low and away for strike one. The 0 1. Swing and a miss. Same pitch, same spot, same result. 0 and 2. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. Got him to chase another one, low and away. For the strikeout and final out of the inning, Erskine leaves two stranded, but they still lead the Pacers 8-2, to two, moving on to the bottom of the eighth.
And we move to the bottom of the eighth inning. Trey Paluski will lead it off as the Pacers trail 8-2. to two. And a new man out of the bullpen for Erskine. Tommy McCarthy comes in for Zach Farmer. McCarthy with a 10.5 ERA. Four appearances, no record as of yet. Six innings pitched, ten strikeouts, and opponents batting 259 on him. First pitch to Paluski is high and away for ball one. Paluski won for three today with a single and a run scored. He struck out looking his last time up. And that pitch misses outside the opponent in the opposite batting bo batter's box. 2-0. Oh. Two zero is high and inside. Three balls and no strikes to the Pacer shortstop. High and outside. Ball four. Paluski walks on four straight to start off the eighth. I'll bring up Connor Durden. Durden two for three with two singles and an RBI. First pitch to Durden is a high fastball, ball one. Down the middle for a strike, one and one. Oh, no, sorry, he missed. Looks like for a second he called that one a strike at the letters, but it was just a bit high, 2-0. That one was down the middle for a strike, two and one. <coughs> High and inside, but it just catches enough of the plate to be called a strike, two and two. The 2-2. Two -two. In there for a call strike three. Durden down looking for the first out. First baseman number 32, Alex Mills. Alex Mills up to bat now. Mills one for three with a home run back in the second inning. Runner on first base with one out here in the eighth inning. First pitch, fastball high, ball one. Misses low, 2 0. High and inside, ball three, three balls, no strikes to Alex Mills. No 
High and inside, ball four. Mills walks on four straight. Runners on first and second for the Pacers. Now we're going to have a visit to the mound, but no pitching change for Erskine. Coming up to bat now for the Pacers will be Luke Leisenring. Leisenring 0 for 2 today with a walk. He struck out his last time up. Pacers need some offense, and they need it fast as they trail by six with only two innings left to play. Well, one and two-thirds innings left to play as there's one out in this inning. The catcher, number 16, Luke Leisenring. And now Leisenring will dig in as the visit to the mound ends. Paluski at second, Mills at first. See if the Pacers can get some offense here from their catcher. First pitch to Lizen Ring is a fastball down the middle for strike one. Misses low with a fastball this time, one and one. Here's a ground ball to second. They'll flip it to short for one. The throw to first is not in time. Unable to turn the double play to end the inning. But they do get a runner, the runner at second base. Runners on the corners for the Pacers now with two outs. And Blake Jenkins coming up. Jenkins 0 for 3 today with two strikeouts. Goes after the first pitch, fouls it off for strike one. The 0-1. Curveball misses. Ball gets away. Coming home is Paluski, and he will score on the pass ball. Heads up base running by Trey Paluski to realize Smith didn't know where the ball was, and the Pacers have cut the lead down a little bit. It's now 8-3, Erskine. Also, Leisenring advanced to second on that play. So one on with two outs for, for Blake Jenkins. Base hit here will cut the lead to four in all likelihood. Count even at one and one on the Pacer left fielder. Swing and a miss on a fastball. One and two. Grounded foul on the first base side. Spoils the pitch, keeps things at one ball and two strikes. Now 
And again, the one-two. Sent into center field. And that will be caught by Lesane for the third and final. The Pacers get a run, however. Trey Paluski coming home to score with some head-up, heads-up base running. But they still trail by five going into the ninth inning. Top of the ninth inning getting underway. Erskine leading USC Aiken 8-3. Lucas Cars will lead it off. He is one for four with a home run and two RBIs. Facing off against Henry Cartrit. First pitch missing for ball one. Cartridge with a 1.54 ERA, 0-1 record in his eight appearances. No starts. Three saves on the year. 11 and two-thirds innings pitched. 19 strikeouts and opponents batting 190 on him. That pitch also missing high for a ball, 2-0. Swing and a miss. Cars goes after one for strike one, two, and one. Inside corner for a strike, two balls and two strikes. Outside for a ball, and the count worked full to Cars. Outside, ball four. Cars wins the battle with a leadoff walk here in the ninth. It looks like we're going to have a pinch runner for cars. Chase Crouch comes in to pinch run. In terms of base running, he's 0 for 1 in stolen bases. And 
And Xander Vizcarando comes up to bat now with a runner on first and nobody out. One for three with a double and a walk. First pitch in there for strike one to Vizcarando. The 0 1 misses low and away with a slurve, 1 and 1. High and inside, ball gets away. Crouch will make it over to second base on the wild pitch. And the count two and one. To Vizcarando. And we're going to have a short visit to the mound. We'll take a short break. Be right back as soon as the visit concludes. Well, the visit is over with. We'll get right back to it. A 2-1 count to Vizcarando. Runner on second now for Erskine here in the top of the ninth inning. Slider misses low. 3-1. Outside corner for a call strike, count full to the Erskine second baseman. Ball low and inside. And another walk, this one to Vizcarano, puts runners on the corners with still nobody out. So Asher Smith up to bat. Again, runners on first and third with nobody out. Smith is one for four with a double and a run scored. And another pinch runner coming in. This Corona will head to the dugout. And I believe that's – no, that can't be Trevor Lisson. He's a, he's already in the lineup. Can't quite catch the number. Possibly Gregory Sanders. I think that's a number eight out there. Gregory Sanders coming in to pinch run. And PA has just confirmed that my choice, that my uh, guess was correct. 
Again, Asher Smith steps up to the plate now. First pitch in there for a strike. 0 and 1. Check throw to first, not in time. Pitch misses high for a ball, one and one. Another pitch misses high. Two balls and one strike. Call a time again as the pitch was on its way. As Karcher was in the middle of his delivery. Now the 2-1. Low and inside, three balls, one strike. Archard having a little bit of trouble finding the strike zone with consistency. Runner takes off. That one is popped up foul territory, first base side. And that'll end up out of play, and then we have another full count. This one to Asher Smith. The 3-2 again, the runner goes, and that one is skied into the air. Left field, long run for Jenkins, but he gets there and makes the catch. Runner tags from third, coming home to score it is Crouch, and Erskine is back on top by six. They lead at 9-3 to three on the sacrifice fly from Asher Smith. The center fielder, Trevor Lassane. That brings up Trevor Lassane. Lassane one for four with a single. Runner on first with one out. Swing and a miss on the first pitch for strike one. Runner takes off, swing and a miss. 
Throw from Leisenring is high as Paluski jumps up to grab it. That'll be a stolen base for Gregory Sanders. A runner now on second for Erskine with one out. Count even at one and one on Lassane. Or a correction, the count is 0-2 on Lassane. And a swing and a miss. Lassane down on three straight pitches. Hartrick was locked in on that at bat to get the Erskine center fielder on three straight. The right fielder, Corey Everett. And brings up Corey Everett. Two singles, a double, three runs scored, an RBI, three for five on the day with a runner on second base and two outs here in the top of the ninth. First pitch outside for ball one. The one up. This is high, two and up. That one is sent on out into left field. Going back is Jenkins near the warning track. He makes the catch for the third and final out. We're moving on to the bottom of the ninth. Pacers trail by six, needing to mount a heck of a comeback in the bottom half of this inning. And we're back with the bottom of the ninth inning. A new pitcher on the mound for Erskine, Trey Watts, coming into the game. 5.63 ERA on the year, 0-2 record in seven appearances, two saves. Eight innings pitched, no st uh, six strikeouts, and opponents batting 314. Phil Watcher at the plate, facing an 0-1 count. Watcher 0 for 3 today. Pitch low and inside for a ball, 1-1. One Ooh. 
Low and inside, two and one. Upper outside corner for a call strike. Count evens up at two and two on Watcher. The 2-2 pitch, outside, full count. Ooh, good looking pitch, but it just missed a little high. Watch her with the leadoff walk. To start the ninth. The third baseman, Chandler Rogers. Now Chandler Rogers will come to the plate. Rogers 0 for 2. He's been hit by a pitch. Grounded out his last time up. Runner on first base with nobody out. As the Flying Fleet have a little meeting on the mound. Rodgers digging in now. Again, runner on first base with nobody out here in the ninth. Pacers looking to mount a comeback. Down by six, nine to three, your score in the ninth. Pitch upper inside corner for a call strike to Rodgers. The 0 1. Curveball misses inside. 1 and 1. Misses outside. Two balls and one strike. Down the middle for a call strike. Two balls and two strikes. Rodgers with an even count now. Goes after that one. Loops it over the head of the shortstop. Heist for a base hit. Softly tapped it, but tapped it well. Gets a base hit. Runners on first and second for the Pacers. Nobody out. Jackson Hannon coming to the plate. Hannon's 0 for 3 today. Looking for his first hit. Pitch low and away for a ball, 1-0. A little more action now in the Erskine pen. Nobody was up and throwing. Now they got some guys warming up. 
you know, warming up to warm up, I should say. The 1 0. Rushes the corner for a strike, 1 and 1. Outside corner for a call strike. Snap throw to first. Not in time. Rogers wandered a little too far off the bag. He got back safely. So the count one and two to Hannon. Grounded off the end of the bat. Throw to short for one, and that's all they're going to get on the fielder's choice. So Hannon reaches safely, but Rogers is thrown out headed for second. Watchers at third, so runners on the corners. Base is going to have a pinch hitter come in. Kerry Holloway will pinch hit for Sean McQuillan. All the way batting 235 on the year. Runners on the corners for the Pacers with one out here in the ninth. Pitch tails out of the zone. 1-0. Down the middle for a strike, one and one. The one one fouled off out of play, one and two to carry Holloway. The one, two, swing and a miss. Holloway chased one low and away. He's down on strikes for the second out. I'll bring up tr to Trey Paluski. Paluski is one for three today, a single, a walk, and two runs scored. First pitch, low and away, ball one. Outside corner, call strike, one and one. Bases down to their last out now. Pluski hoping that's not him, trying to extend it as long as he can. This is outside, two and one. The 2 1 outside, 3 and 1. Go. 
Low and away, ball for Trey Paluski walks. The inning continues and the bases are loaded for the Pacers. And coming to bat is Connor Durden. Durden two for four with a pair of singles and an RBI. He struck out looking his last time up. First pitch to Durden misses inside for ball one. Down the middle for a strike, one and one. Swing and a miss. Durden swinging for the fences there. Missed one and two. Bases down to their final strike. And bases loaded. One ball, two strikes, and two outs here in the top, of, the bottom of the ninth inning. Pacers down by six. All in the dirt. Ball gets away. Coming home and scoring is Phil Watcher. Paluski and Hannon each advance. So another run scores. Pacers cut the lead to five again. It's nine to four, Erskine, on the wild pitch. Runners on second and third still. Two outs and a 2 2 count to Connor Durden. And a swing and a miss. Durden down on strikes for the third and final out. That will do it here from Roberto Hernandez Stadium as the Pacers fall to the Flying Fleet by a score of 9-4. to four. USC Aiken will be back in action this weekend. On March 15th, they start up a three-game set with Georgia Southwestern. That game is at 6 p.m. March 16th, the next day, same team at 2 p.m. And the March 17th, they'll have their third and final game with the Hurricanes at 1 p.m. But until then, I am Marcus Johnson. Thank you for joining us this evening, and have a good one.